Kia ora, good evening. The proposed Milford Dart Tunnel has been declined by Conservation Minister Nick Smith, who announcing his decision this afternoon said the project's environmental impacts are deemed significant and beyond what's appropriate. He says the proposal to build a tunnel under parts of Mount Aspiring and Fiordland National Parks was declined because of the permanent damage created by tunnel spoil, impacts of new roads at tunnel ends and because the tunnel and engineering works are inconsistent with National Park management plans. The project would have halved travel time for visitors from Queenstown to Milford Sound. Milford Dart Managing Director Tom Elworthy was unavailable for comment following the announcement. Invercargill is set to get a new $13 million airport terminal with work likely to begin in the first quarter of 2014. Construction is expected to begin next year with the new terminal to be a single level building on the same site built in three stages over approximately 20 months. Invercargill City Council passed a resolution last night to direct Invercargill City Holdings to invest $13 million of capital to the airport for the upgrade. Airport Chairman Joe O'Connell says passenger numbers have grown from 44,000 when the building opened in 1964 to 273,000 last year. Among issues being addressed, earthquake proofing and future demand. We've got an issue with ageing infrastructure at the airport and the, the terminal building was built 50 years ago so it's really at the end of its economic life and we had to do something about that. Now the idea for an upgrade was put forward in 2011 and a cost was given of around 8 to 10 million dollars. It's now 13. Where's that extra uh, money needed? At that point that was very, uh, very superficial estimate of what the cost. Over that time we've gone through a very extensive um, planning process. We've looked at four different options and we've narrowed it down to the overbuild over the existing terminal. So really it's now just firming up on what the actual cost is realistically going to be to undertake the development. So why has it taken so long to get from 2011 to, to where we are now? There was a lot of planning work that had to go in, into it. Um, we wanted to make sure that we really understood what the long-term requirements of the airport were. We had to understand and make sure that our users were happy, so there was a lot of consultation went in with that. And just looking at four different options did take its time and, and we needed to be sure we had the sizing right and that the future path was, was certain. Now, airport upgrade, could we be looking at international flights in the future? There is no, there's no provision being made for internationals at all. What we have done is in the footprint, we have allowed an expansion path if it was ever required, but we are focused on building an airport for, international, uh, for regional services only. So in terms of this, how is Invercargill Airport going to pay the, the cost of the upgrade? We've gone to Invercargill City Holdings and we have requested an equity injection in order to allow us to proceed with this development. So how are you paying that back? Well that will ultimately t depend on where our revenue bases end up. We, we do need to increase our revenue base, we are doing work around that um, and the, that will ultimately de be determined by commercial discussions we're having with our airport users. Now potentially we could be seeing a, a departure tax or development levy, can you explain that? Well one of the means of um, trying to fund the development is that we have a development levy that people pay on their departure. Um, we, we, that is not our preference. We would prefer to see that airport user charges are set appropriately that covers uh, the costs that we need to meet. Um, Ultimately, that will be determined after we've had discussions with our commercial users. Progress is being made in resolving outstanding problems with Novapay, but more than 4,000 people still have issues, according to Minister responsible for Novapay, Stephen Joyce. Mr Joyce says since the establishment of the Backlog Clearance Unit in late March, significant progress has been made with virtually the entire backlog of around 12,000 pay instructions cleared. However, there are still issues with around 4,400 people having problems with leave balances. The latest complaints and notifications have been released showing 0.2% of staff around the country had problems with payroll in the pay period for Ju July 10th with 156 schools affected. Farm sales across the country increased more than 16% for the three months end of June compared to the same period last year. The median land value per hectare increased 12.3% for the three months to June compared to the same period last year, but fell 3.8% 3, 3 compared to May. 
Seven regions recorded increased sales volumes for the three months end of June compared to the same time last year, while four regions recorded decreases, including Southland, Nelson and Wellington. 1,501 homes were sold in the year to June, an increase of 6.2% on the previous year. Stay with us after the break, why Southland children are lining up to get into school these school holidays. Welcome back. It might be school holidays, but that didn't stop hundreds of children from rushing to get to school today as the annual ILT Kids Zone Festival kicked off. Ella Prendergast has the story. Hundreds of kids crowded the doors of James Hargis College this morning, awaiting the opening of their annual Kids Zone Festival. 11,000 people are expected to attend over the six day event. Festival director Laura Russell says she couldn't be happier with the turnout on opening day. We put on, uh, we sell 1,800 tickets a day, so today and Thursday and Friday have sold out already, so we're expecting Saturday, Sunday, Monday to, Monday to go pretty quickly as well. 150 volunteers are needed every day to make the ninth year a success. However, there was a last minute dash to pull enough people together. It sort of happens every year that the weekends are low, but it always comes together and, and we, you know, we, we find people, they come, to, they just love the festival. There are activities to cater for everyone's interests. I'm here in the Mad Professor's Lab, one of the 170 events at the Kids Zone Festival. It's easy to see with activities like this, what makes Kids Zone such a success. Initially a volunteer, Karen Anderson is now an area manager and says being part of the festival is something anyone can enjoy. I think it's the philosophy, it's the idea that you pay um, $14 and you can come in and everything's free. It's not like anything else in New Zealand. So you can come in and everybody has the same experience. So everyone can enjoy the same um, resources and goods and it doesn't matter about what sort of walk of life you are from. The children also have a lot of activities to get through and a tough job picking a favourite. Um, incredible edibles. Playing with the bubbles. Like there's golf and sports games and all that. Um, probably um, making the scarves. Probably making the food. Kid Zone runs for another five days, with each day expected to sell out. Ella Prendergast, South Today News. A new inflatable squash court aimed at taking the game to the people was launched by Squash Southland today. The $15,000 court imported from Germany will be used to market the game at a range of events from AMP shows to the races, but its first official launch was at Kid Zone this morning. The court is about 65% of the size of a normal court and Squash Southland administrator Marge Baker says that it will be the second portable court in Southland. It's been paid for by donations from the Invercargill Licensing Trust, Community Trust of Southland and Pub Charity, as well as Squash Southland Reserves. A team of four from James Hargist College have won a national competition run by Treasury to create policies to improve New Zealand's long-term economic growth. It's the second consecutive year the school has won. I spoke to student Alex Blair about their win. One of our policies was to decentralise um aspects of the government and larger businesses. Obviously um, Auckland is quite well populated and in that the government has to spend quite a bit of money on um, areas such as transport and infrastructure. So we wanted to sort of decentralise that and um, make sure that the population was a little bit more balanced and spread through New Zealand, therefore lowering house prices and um, living prices effectively. How was that received? That was really well received. They were quite interested in sort of the ways we could go around that. Obviously we're an Invercargill team, so we spoke about Invercargill. There's plenty of room for everyone else to come down here and live. So um, they were quite interested in that and um, that was probably one of our strongest uh, policies, I think. Tell us about the brain exchange. That was another concept. Yeah, the brain exchange was another concept. There was the ability to sort of encourage work, um, students to go overseas while during tertiary education as opposed to when they're workers. Um, a lot of New Zealanders are leaving, qualified New Zealanders are leaving to places like Australia and the UK and we want to encourage them to go during tertiary um, levels of study so that therefore they can come home uh, once they are qualified and sort of contribute positively to the New Zealand economy. And that might involve other countries coming here as an exchange as part of that? Yeah, we also um, were looking at possibly taking European or Australian um, students over to here so obviously they can come and learn about the culture of New Zealand, possibly pick up stuff that Kiwis do well and sort of translate that in both ways. 
Another thing that came up quite strong in, um, in the survey was family life um, and you talked about perhaps training parents. Yeah, we conducted a survey of our local community of around 100, that was the sample size and we asked them about six stages, six the six points of our hexagon and family life really came up quite strong and we spoke about um, that being quite important to improving workers' productivity and training parents was um, one of the policies um, that we thought about. Yeah. And again, how did the panel take that on? They were quite interested. They never really thought of that. I think parent education was something that had been talked about but probably wasn't seriously thought about. So we encouraged the government to um, add a considerable contribution of financial assistance to parent education and support networks for parents. And we think that's an important, um, was an important part of why um, our policy was quite strong. 18 Southland residents also became New Zealand citizens today at a ceremony at Southland District Council. A ceremony at Council Chambers was held for the new citizens this afternoon, being sworn in by Mayor Fra Nakadno. The new citizens were encouraged to participate in their communities and were encouraged to embrace their new privileges and responsibilities. The new Kiwis originally hailed from South Africa, Kenya, Thailand and Slovenia. It's the second citizenship ceremony in Invercargill over the past two days, with 27 people made new citizens at City Council yesterday. Stay with us, coming up in Sports Central Pulse coach Robin Broughton, that's after the weather next. Good evening.